Chris. Uh, ben Brunson Diaz, how is he after the other night and uh, the the precaution that you took in taking him off? Yeah, we did. We 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 made the correct decision, and uh, it was a difficult one at the time because obviously the impact that that Ben was having on the game and the impact that overall he's had on on uh, on on the team since he's been here, we've been delighted with him. But you know, my conversation with him at half time is that we can't afford to lose him, and um, and and the, and the risk and reward. Um, Scenario that we were in, so um, we we made that sensible decision, and um, and he'll be okay for the weekend. Ivo Gerbic and his concussion. Is he going to be able to play this weekend, or is he or is he out? No, he's out. So the concussion rules straight away kick into place. Um, talked about the decision um, at, at, at the time. We lose our goalkeeper for the remaining part of the game and we lose him for for another 7 to 12 days potentially so uh, that's disappointing as well so um but most most of the biggest thing is obviously that that those decisions are in place and uh, and the correct decision by the doctor was to was to bring him bring him off and it was it was cemented in terms of his reaction sort of overnight and the next day so uh, yeah that was a disappointing one and disappointing you know regardless of the player made you know um, well, it was a deliberate or a non-deliberate action you know um, we're the ones that have to suffer again Have you talked to anyone about that because I know we've we've spoken about the referees in the last couple of games have, have you made any representation to PGMOL or, or anyone about your frustrations that you've, you've heard? Uh, no, I haven't. We've obviously had a, uh, a, a you know a sort of busy two or three days, so yeah, it's down my list, and um, I'm not confident that I'll get anything back that will will change my opinion of on how things are. You know, we, we've talked about it, and uh, uh, you know, I, I, I look back, and you know, I'm not just looking back over sort of the last sort of ten games. I'm looking back from a from a longer period, you know, before I was here as well. So. Um, um, I think it's just the, the the annoying, you know, in-game decisions that you know the soft fouls just just go go against us. I think as I said it's an easy one. I said before, maybe the the the, the thought process and the outlook is that you know they won't be long in this division. So you know I might be refereeing the other team next year and don't upset too many too many people. But I won't be saying it if I didn't think it was right. And, you know, I've got to say as well, you look from, from my staff's point of view, I've got Keith Andrews there, who's an international player, played a lot of games at the ice level. Jack Lester played a lot of games. Alan Neil played a lot of games. You know, um, Matt Duke played a lot of games myself. So from a playing point of view and from a coaching and management point of view, it's quite a lot of experience. And we all feel the same right the way through. And I think, you know, majority of Sheffield United supporters will feel the same as well. So I'm not... I'm not just speaking on behalf of myself, I'm speaking on behalf of players and most importantly I'm speaking on behalf of the football club that come on, we need to make sure that this is, this is right and sorted and, and um, it's refereed in the, in, in the right way and people look back and go, oh, maybe, you, you know, yeah, well, what about that penalty that you, you should have been given against, you against West Ham, but what about the other things that have been, that have gone the other way, like, and there's more things that have not gone our way than have gone our way um, and as well the general the general refereeing, as I said about, and I was told, you know, I was told about this coming into the division that that get ready, um, all the all the slight decisions, all the easy decisions, they'll they'll go against you, and, and it has had that feel, and um, that's a disappointing thing from my point of view. With with Evo missing um, for this weekend and potentially a bit more, does that mean Wes Fodringham now won't be going, and you're not entertaining any? Well, we haven't had we haven't had uh, any anything uh, any inquiries about Wes, and um, there was no. Uh, immediate um, plans to uh, to move Wes on. Um, he asked it from his point of view, which he's entitled to do that, and and I, I understand that. And it was a, it was a you know it's a difficult decision um, um, for, for for me, and you know put him in a difficult position as well. But this is football, it's professional football, and I've got to say he's he's, he's reacted brilliantly to everything. He's trained. Very, very well. He's been super professional, which I, I expect him to be, and he has done. And um, and if he he uh, he plays on, uh, on 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 Saturday evening, um, there's no problem. There's no 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 issue about that. And um, um, as far as I'm concerned, he gets on with it and, and gets on with with playing his part. And hopefully, is another positive performance. It's been reported that a deal's been agreed with Joe Worrell at Nottingham Forest to to come in. Yeah, I mean, listen, 
Adam, you know that. You know what happens. Is a deal reported about players going out? Is a deal reported about players coming in? You know, it's just that's just the time, the, the timing of all this stuff. So um, you know, we won't we won't unveil anything or, or release anything until everything's done. Uh, buying club, um, player, selling club in terms of a loan. Um, and, and medical and and, uh, and terms and everything like that. So I'm not going to get caught up in all, all stuff like that. Um, we are actively looking to replace Basham Stroke Egan, um, short to medium term um, in, in, in this window. We have done, that was one of my first conversations with Prince Abdullah, um, what was needed um, and, uh, and all three positions that we looked at. Um, the major positions from the first team, we've 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 we have addressed two out of the three, and we're, we're we're super confident that we can address all three. Is there just one kind of target you're looking at today in terms of that right-sided centre back? Because there's still talk around Mason Holgate and Harry Souter as well as Joe Worrell. I know you're not going to talk about names, but is it just one you're focusing on, or is there I think you have to options? have a back. You have to have a backup, and and things incredibly change. And you know, I think the Peter Peter. Odd and wingy sort of scenario sits sits firmly in in the uh, in the head of most football clubs in terms of what can happen and uh, and what might not happen as well. So until until you see somebody with a pen in his hand with with the old manager you know draped over him and, and wishing him all the best and welcoming him to the football club, I think you know that's that's what can happen. And uh, uh, so we, we we make sure that we do everything to to make that happen and uh, and, and cement those deals. Are you confident in this place that that one will get over the line though? I don't yeah. know. You can never say never, but yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, and I'd like to thank as well, like I said, the backing of the ball because they've been super and one hundred percent behind what we've what we've tried to do. There wasn't going to be major major surgery to it. Um, there was there wasn't going to be a wrecking ball to to to, to the group. Yeah, as I said. At the start of the window to the finish of the window, which is obviously you know we're 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 we're, we're fast approaching, and as well the uh, the contract situation regarding the young players, I believe it's been a really it will be a really positive window, and and so far leading up to it, it looks that way. Is the squad better now than it was at the, the start of the window, and do you feel that you've been given enough backing to give survival a, yeah, a real crack? Yeah, one hundred percent. You know, it's it's a difficult one because. We're not in a, uh, a fabulous position from a league point of view, and, and we have to make sure that we look after the pennies and and we're sensible. And that comes from me, you know. And, I, and I've always been like that in terms of sort of re- re- recruitment. And I think I've told you before, you know, my my, my sort of journey uh, in, in football has has, has has not been lit littered with with uh, a, a reckless approach um, and you know an open checkbook let's just sign everybody and and I'll walk off in a, in a year or two's time and and the club's been in a, in, a, in a terrible situation you know we've we've done things we've we've made decisions as a football club we, we, we make decisions from a from a recruitment point of view from what we see what we want what we're after then it goes through the the, the, the relevant channels into board um, you know, into board approval uh, with a presentation, and this is our our idea, uh, and this is the reasons why we're doing it. And and every and everybody, every player has that situation. So you know, um, it it was it was working with the group pretty quickly. Um, talked about that in, in in previous interviews. What we need to do, how we need to address the approach from a playing point of view. How we need to address um, the belief and the confidence into the group. <clears throat> how to make that shirt light, the connection back with the supporters. So I think a lot of those things that we that we were looking to to achieve, we have done. We need to affect the results more. You know that is that is obviously my biggest thing now, or not as always has been. You know, looking back at the the um, uh, the, the group of fixtures that we that we've had leading up to this this window or during this window, we haven't affected the result enough. Uh, and um, no hard luck stories. No, we should have got three points against Villa and we should have beat West Ham and we, we can't lose from 2-1 up against Luton uh, and other situations, even Palace situation, no hard luck stories, this, that and the other. It is and it always has to be a balance and the balance is, you know, marrying up better performances, which I believe we are producing um, and uh, marrying it up with that with uh, with three points, stroke one point and, um, and we, have to, we, have to, we have to do that. Um, sooner than later. Obviously, last time you were here, it took you three or four years to, to build a team that was challenging for Europe at the time. 
how long, kind of how many windows do you feel it, it might take to, to build another squad that you're, you're really happy with, that you think is in a, in a really good place? I'm, I'm confident that the, 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 the rebuild that we need to do, we, we need to affect the, try to affect what's happening now, of course, and that's what the window's there for, the January window. The main window is in the summer. We've got a lot of boys out of contract. I'm super confident that we can rebuild. I, I still think this is a fabulous place to come and play football. You know, even now I'm getting, you know, people talk to likes of Tom Davis and saying, you know, he's, uh, you know, uh, I'm, he's, a, he's available and he's available and, and that this is this is a this is a club that's that's still fighting and it's still a very attractive club to come and play the football to play at home every other week uh, to be supported by brilliant away support you know that 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 we've had right the way through my time here the way we play the way we go about the business I think the way we coach and manage as well is attractive to players whether they're lone players or whether the players on permanent I don't see an issue in terms of attracting players what we have to do is get the recruitment right and absolutely spot on. And, um, and and culturally get that right as well, and uh, and that doesn't mean that we're just you know fishing in one pond. Um, we have to make make sure that we we uh, you know we we we, we look uh, and, and and get that right. But super confident, you know, medium to long term that we can that we can we can nail that down. And uh, there's no reason why we can't do can't do that, regardless of what division we'll be in. In terms of abouts, Ishmael Akulabali, is he still one you're expecting to leave today? In yeah, respect? yeah, I think there's been a deal done for for him, um, and there's a couple of young boys as well that um, that have really impressed. I think you know one of one of the things that you know one of the things that have really impressed me is the way that the the academy has has, has really kicked on um, and accelerated, and there's some fabulous young players here. You know, we're, we're, we're close to signing, uh, 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 renegotiating with a couple more. You know, Jilly uh, uh, and Femi, two young kids out the out of the academy. You know, and you like Oli Arblasters, Jebersons, Asulas, Brooks, um, City Pecks. You know, um, hopefully I've not missed 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 anybody. But you know, that's seven or eight really good young players as well. And we understand whatever division we're in next season, whether it's the Premier League or, 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 or the Championship, it can't be all about young players. But to have that group of young players coming through and progressing and impressing and wanting to be, uh, wanting to play for me and wanting to play for the football club is, is incredibly important. And um, so that excites us as a coaching staff. My, 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 um, my, my message to the, you know, the supporters is that uh, you know, inwardly, we're really looking forward to working with these young players, and it's important that that pathway is there, and it has been, and it will carry on, and we, we're, we're we're delighted and looking forward to for, for doing that. But I think everybody understands as well that there has to be a certain balance to that as well, because um, because you know uh, the kids need you know the, the the culture carriers around with them as well, and the experienced boys that that know the way around a football pitch and know how to win three points as well mentioned Femi Sariki as, as one of them. It has been reported that he's already agreed a new deal and could be off to one of your former clubs, Rotherham. Anything you can confirm on that one? There's, there's, there's a number of inquiries about a lot of the young kids as well. You know, we've had a couple of inquiries about our blaster out of the championship. No, is he out? We want to get him back fit. We want to get involved in our first team. You know, uh, you know Jebison, Ackford, um, other, other the young players, the, the sought after young players. I, and, and I do believe there's a couple of things in there. They're talented, they're really talented footballers, but they've got a fabulous attitude. And I've got to say, if I was a manager at another club, I'd be looking at Sheffield United. If I was in the champ and League One or, or, or League Two managing there, I'd be looking at Sheffield United and saying there's some really good young players there that, that, are, that, that are well-rounded, well-grounded young footballers that will be a, a great addition to, to our group. In terms of recent form, clearly your goal scoring has improved, scored couple of goals on a number of occasions has that been at the expense of matters at, at the other end yeah it's something that I've at looked at you know we can talk about Elise's finishes we can talk about Eze's finish um, and, and, and their play but we have to look at ourselves as well can we get a little bit tighter is our organisation right I think we've been pretty unlucky as well on some of the goals you know you, you, you're looking back and obviously we're doing unit meetings from a defensive point of view when you look back at, at the West Ham goal it's a shot it deflects ricochets over the two own goals against Luton the penalty against West Ham but we have to look and say you know we have to be brighter and cuter as well um, 
you know, what can we do to stop those stop those goals going in? But you know, we we understand when we're, when we're in the Premier League that we're going to be up against it. But uh, you know, it's not one way traffic. We're not 10, 15, 20 percent possession. We're having the bulk of the ball. We're allowed to. We're, we're allowing ourselves to play. The structure of the team's good. We are creating chances. The spirit of the team is is, is excellent. You know, we're a crossbar width of of of, uh, of, of getting a, a result, and I do believe we deserve result. Our second half was was really positive. We changed a couple of things around a little bit, but whatever shape we play, whatever system we play, we want to go and create chances. But certainly, we can be really disappointed with the goals that we've conceded because there's some poor goals in there, and we, you know, we are. Uh, uh, the architect of our, our our downfall on 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 those goals, and we have to we have to tighten up, we have to tighten up individually, and we have to tighten up in terms of, you know, the the organisation collectively on on sort of those goals to to get that balance right as well. We're starting to look at, at Villa this weekend. Wanted to ask about Cameron Archer. Clearly scored some goals, had a good impact this year. He's found himself on the bench though for the last three league games is he unlucky with the options you've got do you want to see anything more from him what, what's what no they, they all have got to produce um, you know there's been opportunities for Cam as well you know opportunity at Gillingham so there's all, there's all, always good opportunities for these players I'm not a subscriber of you know he can feel sorry for himself you can't whether you sub or whether you start whether you get 10 minutes you get half an hour you get 70 minutes there's a massive opportunity for you we felt that it was right for Asula to, to play against Brighton, their high line. Uh, we felt it was right for, for Will to play against Gillingham. So, you know, he comes off, Will comes off against West Ham and Ollie goes on. Um, so, because Will wasn't great in the first half against West Ham and wasn't linking it as well as he should have done. So, there's always, you know, it's, it's quite difficult because you want to let him go and have a run, but you still, you know, you've got to show that consistency to deserve that run. So Cam's in the mix for the game. Um, he was he was better second half at, at Villa Park. I think it was quite difficult for young players to go back as well to their to their parent club or the club that they've grew up with and, um, and, and 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 produce a performance, especially when it was quite a defensive performance, which it had to be. I think they were what they'd won fifteen out of fifteen at the time, fourteen or fifteen out of fifteen, um, and we were. We were a minute away or a minute and a half away of smashing smashing that and we obviously got a result. But we were disappointed not to see it out and uh, Cam scored. So he's in the mix. We have to get the selection right as well as well as the, uh, the formation. Does that result still sting a bit from, from Villa Park with, with the fact you came so close to getting a, a result? Yeah, I think so. You know, I think worse performances have got better results than that. And um, yeah, of course we want, you know, I'm... I, I, I and coaches and, and players want want to win. We've been keep saying to you, we've been brought up that we don't get to this position and situation, but we have to get the balance right. So performance stroke stroke result. If you're telling me at five o'clock on a on a on a, uh, or on, a on a Saturday afternoon and you've you've won a game and not played particularly well, would you take that? Yeah, um, but I think that that runs out. That runs out. I think you can nick a result here. Or you can nick a result there. So. Part of me always looks at him going, if you're playing well, it'll come to you. I believe we are playing well and I believe it'll come to us. Um, but it has, to, it has to happen sooner than later, we understand that. And that's the pressure we have to play under and the pressure we should thrive upon uh, and, uh, and look to enjoy as well. And why shouldn't we look to enjoy the game on Saturday night? You know, it's going to be a fabulous, fabulous game. We've had some cracking games against Villa in the past home and away. Um, full house, Bramall Lane under the lights at R5. And um, it's something that we're really looking forward to and looking to looking to step into as well. It was a very defensive performance, as you mentioned, away. Different approach this weekend, seems it's at home under the lights, so you're going to have to kind of mix it up a little bit. Well, listen, we understand that they're a top side and um, and really kicked on in the Premier League uh, over the last three or four years. Um, we've got some fabulous players, so um, we're going to have to deal with that, but it ain't going to be a one-sided affair. Liverpool wasn't, Brentford wasn't. You know, uh, uh, West Ham wasn't, Luton wasn't, um, and, and we have to make sure that, you know, if we're being, if we're being um, honest about it and, and 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 sensible about it, the majority of points, if we are going to uh, win games of football, are going to be gained at Bramall Lane. So we have to have a front foot positive mentality, and uh, especially at home, and 
and galvanise and utilise the, 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 the support we have. And, I, you know, as we all know, that when, when it does get rocking, and I'm sure it will be rocking on, on, on Saturday night, if we set the tone, then we can hopefully make it a really difficult evening for Aston Villa. Cheers, Chris. Good luck. Cheers, Adam. Thank you. You OK? Yeah, great, Chris. Just one. Hi, mate. Hey, mate. Just to go back to, to the refereeing frustrations, um, I know it's down your list of priorities, but when, when you, you, you come to, to sort of focus on that, do you, do you put something in writing to compete the amount or do you pick the phone up and have a, a, a more informal... Conversation. Well, you have the you have the opportunity when the when the um, the referees report comes in from from the PG MLO, OL MLO whatever it is, you you have that opportunity of um, of, of of responding um, and responded a couple of times. I'm not a serial responder that you know everything has to go for us. I understand that and understand that you know some are tight decisions, but this is the general feel I have at the moment regarding where we're at. And um, and obviously, um, you know, players going down and jumping back up is a bugbear. It really does annoy me. And I, I think that, you know, those guys have a have an opportunity to um, to be a little bit firmer as well with the referees when they're basically trying to con the officials by going down, rolling about, and then getting up within within five seconds and sprinting. Sprinting like, uh, uh, like, like you've never known. So, um, but then it does come to the situation where you can, and they are um, open for you to speak to the guys, to speak to Howard, to express your 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 frustration, or or talk to them about maybe certain situations that you're not too happy about. So they are open, and, and you can do that. Uh, just one last last quick one. Unai Emery's. Uh, rightly so, got all sorts of plaudits this season. Just what are your thoughts on what he's, he's done to Villa? You just look at the results, but I've got to say our, our focus is I, I can't be you know too too interested in in an, in apart from when we're playing against them, uh, an opposing opposing manager. Um, <laughs> he's obviously got uh, a fabulous group of players there, uh, a, a great historic football club. Um, and um, and they're at the top of the uh, top of the division for a reason, so we completely respect that. And hopefully, you know, we can show that there's something about us as well from a tactical point of view, um, and, um, and and from a results performance point of view, that we can we can cause them a few problems on on Saturday evening. Thank you. Embargoed stuff.